today. Is that right? Oh man, can you can you guys give us a break? <laughs> we had we had to pray for him now. Okay. <laughs> well, happy birthday to you, Hazes. Have a handshake there. So. Happy birthday. That's all I do. Ah, what's that? That's all I do. That's not Hazes. I'm sorry. I thought about Elijah. <laughs> Literally messed my mind up. So so many names. So hello. Okay. Hello. We can't hear you. Is that speakers on? Oh, oh, we're on mute. We're on mute. Oh, yeah, we're muted. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. We're muting a moment ago. I'm so sorry. We're going to start the video. Let me, let me adjust the volume. Make sure you hear us better. Huh? Oh yeah, that's right. We can't really forget about that. Are you seeing us, Will? Are you seeing us? Everybody, wave the hands. <laughs> Good morning to you. Yeah. So we are talking about the birthdays. I'm just so so. So suddenly it's so quiet about the birthday because we don't celebrate the birthday. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's Naomi's the birthday a few days ago. Am I that Naomi? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Which date? It was the twenty-eighth. Twenty-eighth. So that's just a couple of days ago. So, happy birthday to Naomi. Thank you. And t t Thank you. today they have a. Isaiah, Isaiah confused with Elijah. I shake his head and said, hey, happy birthday to you. So <laughs> it's Isaiah's birthday. So. Isaiah is the youngest. Of, uh, the second youngest. Uh, the second youngest. That's right. I'm sorry. You guys are so good at uh, everything. So yeah, I'm confused. Now, let's move on with the lessons. And uh, uh, let's do a little bit of review. We were in chapter... Six, am I right? Last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Naomi, first the girl going to give us a review you started. Huh? We're, we were in chapter six. Chapter six the last time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like Kayla has a book now. So. Oh, great. You got your book. Chapter six now. So. So the first section was. The chapter name is... Uh, uh, Strangers and Saints in Plymouth. Yeah. Um, and I was talking about William Bradford. Mm -hmm. And he was making a decision to leave his country. Yes. And um, he... Let's see. He left... Where did... Uh, he left England, I guess? England he left first. England first. Settled um, in Dutch, am I right? Yeah, Holland. He yeah. went into Holland and got mm -hmm. and came into the land, or I think this town called Leiden. Yeah. And settled there and got married to Dorothy. Dorothy. And had a son, John. Mm hmm. And then um, they left on a journey to North America. Mm hmm. Mayflower, okay. And How many people together? I don't have the number. I do. Um, and in 1620, they sailed from England mm -hmm. with the pilgrims. Mm -hmm. And then they made the Mayflower Compact mm. to agree on a uh, governor. Mm -hmm. And then. Who is that? That was John Caver. John Caver, okay. And then. Um, they found, they mm -hmm. came, I forget where this is, but where did this, where did they land? They landed in Polymos, right? That's the title. Plymouth, uh, yeah, yeah, that's where Plymouth they Rock. Yeah. yeah, Plymouth Rock. And then mm -hmm. they found in a Indian village. Yeah. And a deserted one. Um, mm -hmm. And they began to kind of like set up there mm -hmm. but that's when a lot of people began to die of starvation and scurvy mm. and um yes that's also when they met the 
Chief of Wamanog. Wam 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 That's tough one, man. Eh? Yeah. Wam Panoig. Panoig. Okay. Um. I don't think I have the guy's name. The chief. What's his name again? Masuit. Oh yeah, I heard Masuit. Masuit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they were. I thought it was captain with him. What is the captain's name? Uh, Squan. Squanto. Squanto. Yeah. And he knew English, so they could kind of yeah. talk to each other through him. Yeah. Um, and then they made a treaty with each other to not hurt each other. Yeah. Um. That's occasion for. Thanksgiving, right? Oh, yeah. So, yes. Yep. That was Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then um, a little bit later, William became leader after John Cover died. Yeah. Um, and then that's all I have for that. So, so there's two plantations here. What 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 was the name? Was that the Massachusetts Bay Colony? Mm hmm. So we had two plantations Massachusetts Bay Colony, okay? Polymoth. In the Massachusetts Bay Colony, right? So. Yeah. Okay, how does the Massachusetts Esther? M A S S A M A S S A C H U S E T S. I S E T T S. Yes. That's a good one, huh? That's a long one, man. So, okay, everybody's bored already. So, okay, plantation. Now, how many original colonies we have here in America? Okay, we're gonna name it again. Okay, thirteen colonies. So that's something gonna be tested again. Okay, if you go to history testing, gonna be tested. So, let's just start with the uh, kill kill out. How many states? original founding states founding colonies rather for the 13th mm -hmm. right? how many can name name few I'm sorry, I don't know. You can <laughs> that's yeah that's the problem with me so I can't express myself well let let the, uh, Naomi define the question for you um, he's yeah, asking, I understand. He's asking to name some of the 13 colonies. Um, yeah. She may she may be unfamiliar with that history as yeah. we haven't reached that yet. In oh, yeah. Way. Okay. Okay, then from... Um, Sorry. That's okay. From um, Esther. Um, she knows everyone. Yeah, I have to print it out. <laughs> yeah, you print it like, out. <laughs> from, from the mind, not from your notes. So. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, from the mind. Not from, not from notes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Right down place. So you're going to New Hampshire. Okay, let's. New Hampshire, how do you spell? New Hampshire. Uh huh. Um, New and then Hampshire. Hampshire. Oh, I don't know if that's right. I just I have no idea how to spell it. So. it is. Uh huh. Okay. <coughs> okay. So next one. Uh, Massachusetts is one. Uh huh. Massachusetts. Okay. And then. Mm hmm. Next one. New Jersey is one. New Jersey. New York. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Pennsylvania. What's the next one? Uh, New York. New York. Okay. And then Pennsylvania. Okay. Pennsylvania. Delaware. Delaware. Five, six, Delaware. And then Maryland. Wow. Maryland. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really remember any other ones. Can okay. okay. <gasps> oh, Connecticut. <laughs> That's right. Okay, you you go on then. Connecticut. North and South Carolina. Oh wow, North 
plus South color. No, no. How Rhode about the Georgia? No Georgia? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Virginia is one. Mm-hmm. Rhode. Georgia is one too. Rhode Island. How did you spell Rhode Island? R H O D E. R H O D E. And then Georgia, am I? Mm-hmm. Eleven in Georgia. We still uh, have a few. Do you do Virginia? That's yeah, Virginia. Virginia. Oh yeah, Virginia. No was Virginia. Okay. And the last one. Did you do Georgia? Oh, Georgia, North, we did, Georgia. did you count North and South Carolina? Yeah. Oh, that's a twice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I got one there. So. Good. You guys doing good. So, okay. So, the first governor for Massachusetts is uh, who's, what's the name? Um, it was, he had a weird name. John Carver, man. So, oh, I thought it was yeah. that guy. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next uh, portion review, we need to move on a little bit. But um, after you do this next way, review, the Dutch in the New World. Um, uh, let's see. In 16... Twenty four, the pilgrims arrived at Lenape. I guess that's what it's called. L e n a p. We already yeah. covered that, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that? Oh wait. Right in Pel Pel oh, wait, Pelham Plantation, the Dutch West India Company was yeah. formed. Then right, so okay, it was built. A, try to build a town called the one. Wait, I have it written out, but I can't read it. It's okay. Are we reading in the book? Or are we we're reading? reviewing. We're still reviewing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're reading. We're reviewing the uh, the Dutch in the New World. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's called New Amsterdam, am I? Amsterdam. Yeah. Amsterdam. New Amsterdam. Yeah. This is where New York came from. You better know a little bit the history of New York. So. Am I right? So. Then there was the Broadway Bridge. Now, what is the tribe name? Na, la, la, la Nape, am right? La Nape. La yeah. Nape. So they changed the, with a gift to what piece of land they changed? It changed what? Uh, it was. Go ahead. Uh, Manhattan, am I right? So. Yeah. Manhattan Island, that's where it came from. Let's move on. Hello. Hi. Somebody's Hi. here. Hi. So there's a. There was a road built around the wall of defense called one road. Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Broadway. Now, what is the governor for that new 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 colony? Peter stuff with. How does how to pronounce that? Stuff sound. Okay. Uh huh. We as in he. Okay. So then what happened? He was an interesting guy with a peg leg on his yeah. right leg. Yeah. That's right. Right leg. Yeah. And then. Yeah. So. Um, What's his nickname called? <laughs> yeah, older silver nails. Oh, stubborn Pete. Stubborn Pete. I like that name. So, anyway, who, who took over the the place eventually? What's the guy's name? Is Duke of York, am I right? So, Duke of York. Yeah, sure. Sorry. That is, he's a, the brother of Charles II, second, am I right? So, so anyway, so that's where we are. So that's where the original New York came from. Let's uh, move on to the 
pretty low. <laughs> Next chapter, so chapter seven. We're going to have Elijah read for us first portion. Chapter seven. What's the name? The spread of slurry. The spread of slurry. The first portion. Part one. Tobacco. Tobacco and unwilling colonists. Okay. Wow, we are busy. And. Unwilling colonist. Let me I'm good. Uh, Elaine is uh, trying to entertain a customer go by the stadium. Well, let me let her so call you back in a few minutes. The fifteen dollars to do the the take flight over here, okay. and then yeah. this one to be determined. If I don't have to transplant it and use another shell, um, it won't be as much as twenty five, <coughs> but it will be a little okay. more. Okay, sorry for that. Let's move on then. Get a guess so. around twenty dollars on that one, but I can let you know. Yeah. Okay, the Elijah read the text. The English wanted New Amsterdam, now New York, because of the rich fur trade that could make money for England. So far, the other English settlements in America hadn't produced much wealth. The King James, or King James, had hoped that Jamestown, James, that the Jamestown colonists would find gold. But the rich soil of Virginia had no jewels or precious metals. But soon, Virginia's ground brought England another kind of gold, green gold. And like the gold of South America, this green gold would bring riches to some and some misery to others. The story of Virginia's ring, green gold began when a young Englishman named John Wolfe around at James, arrived at Jamestown Common. Jamestown had been founded two years before, but the colonists were starving. They were ragged, poor, and wretched struggling through long days of farming and huddling, still hungry over their small fires at night. Mm -hmm. John Rolfe was sure that the colony would fail and that he would have to return to England. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, he had little food and nothing fun to do after a hard day of labor in the hot Virginia sun. That call was a neat. Okay, neat. Okay, we'll yes, off. okay, yeah, go ahead. But John Rolfe did have a few tobacco seeds, and like many Englishmen, he loved to smoke. Rolfe had already noticed that Native Americans who lived near the colony grew a kind of tobacco of their own. They planted it, weeded it carefully, picked it by hand, hung the leaves to dry over the smoke of wood and fire, and then rolled the leaves and up, rolled, the, rolled the leaves up and smoked them. Have you guys uh, seen tobacco leaves? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. How so? We smoked them once. We smoked them yeah. once? Seriously? Everybody? Mm. Yes. No. <laughs> I used to plant tobacco, so try it like that. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. My, my father smoked, that's his, uh, that's his portion. <laughs> Every year at the harvest. So. <laughs> What's wrong? <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Go ahead. It's a fun experience. Though. It's really yeah. smoking. Yeah. Dad used to do it. <laughs> he used Dad to do it. Used to do he used a pipe. pipe. Yeah. Dad used so to pipe. He tried it. <laughs> he tried a few times. He gave me his pipe. He got an assortment of pipes. Yeah. Different pipes. Big box. I used to like to smell that box. Every one of that? Yeah, they smell it. Why not? I didn't smoke them. I just smoked Good experience. <laughs> 
Other colonists had this, tried this native Virginia tobacco, but they didn't like the way it tasted. Poor and weak and... Uh, biting. Wait, what's that? The biting Wake? taste. Weak. That's so the old English, old English spellings. So, oh. Yeah. It's poor, poor and weak. Poor and weak and of a biting taste, the colonists mm. complained. It's a bitter. Complained. Yeah. But John Rolfe's seeds were the Spanish tobacco, a rich kind of leaf that most Englishmen preferred. Spanish tobacco, see? Different kind. Ah, Virginia tobacco, that's from a, original from a Indian native tobacco, right? The Indian planet. But it bring a new brand that changed the whole history. Can you believe that? So, good. Rolfe found a fertile patch of land and planted his seeds. Mm -hmm. He occupied, he, he copied the native, wow. He copied the Native American methods of raising the plants, picking the leaves and hanging them up to dry. When he rolled up his sleeves, when he rolled up his leaves and smoked them, he was delighted. He thought that the Virginia grown Spanish leaf tasted wonderful. <laughs> John Rolfe shared let's, his... Uh, let's stop there, have a next person read it for us. There are going to be no one, no one read it for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so after... John Rolfe shared his tobacco with a few other colonists. Mm -hmm. They agreed. The leaf tasted wonderful. Together, the colonists grew a few more plants and sent some of the tobacco to London. London was full of tobacco users. All the most fashionable young men of England smoked. What? Seriously? <laughs> they blew so much smoke out of their mouths and noses that they were called reeking gallants. <laughs> Seriously? Often, they had servants who did nothing but follow them around to taverns, balls, and theaters carrying their tobacco equipment. Oh, wow. A German visitor to England marveled. Everywhere, the English are constantly smoking. They draw the smoke into their mouths and puff out again through their nostrils like funnels, along with plenty of phlegm from the head. Mm. But until now, the English had been forced to buy tobacco from the Spanish. Mm. And Spain had, and England were continually at war. If the English could buy Virginia tobacco instead, they wouldn't have to pay money to their enemies. <laughs> mm. London smokers purchased all the tobacco from the Jamestown that the Jamestown colonists sent, and exclaimed over the new leaf. No country under the sun may, or doth afford, more pleasant, sweet, and strong tobacco. One Englishman marveled. Merchants begged for more. The Jamestown colonists realized that although they had no gold, they might have something better. Only six years after Rolf had planted his seeds, the, fa the first planted his seeds, the Jamestown colonists were planting tobacco everywhere, even in the streets of their town. By the following year, England was buying more tobacco from Virginia than from Spain. Not everyone was pleased with English smoking habits. King James wrote an essay called Counterblast to Tobacco, <laughs> which he announced. Smoking is a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the black, stinking fume thereof, nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. <laughs> Seriously. Englishmen kept right on smoking. By 1630, Virginia was sending over a half million pounds of tobacco to England every year. Wow. But raising tobacco took an enormous amount of work. The seeds had to be hand-planted, hand-weeded, and hand-pruned. Caterpillars and worms had to be picked off one at a time. When the tobacco plants were ready, the leaves had to be taken off one at a time and hung on pegs to dry for six weeks. Then the stems had to be taken off and the leaves packed one at a time into barrels. One farm worker could only take care of two or three acres of tobacco. You can stop there, let Naomi continue. So. Mm. Um, Kayla, can you catch up? You're listening, you catch up? Oh, great, okay. Any questions or we uh, lost you, just 
Papin said, hey, I need you to stop there. Can I ask a question? Stuff like that, okay? So. Hi, Nick. How are you? <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Good to hear from you. Go ahead. Don't worry. It has, yeah. Poor Reno. Yes, the, the email. Yes, I do get your email updates. I haven't checked my email yet this morning. Uh, you are right here. The, the chapter start with at first. At first, uh, to tobacco farmers hired indentured indentured, indentured servants. Poor Englishmen and women who agreed to work for a colonist who oh. paid for their journey to the New World and gave them food and a place to live. After six or seven years, the colonists would give the servant a new suit of clothes and enough money to get started. The servant was now a member of the colony. Many Americans who began, began as, how do you pronounce that again? Indentured. Indentured servants later became yes. wealthy, important citizens. Means hard hand, basically. Hard yeah. hand, yeah. But as the tobacco fields grew larger, farmers needed even more help. In 1619, a Dutch trading ship threw down its archer mm -hmm. in the anchor. anchor in the Chesapeake Chesapeake Bay and offered to sell African mm -hmm. slaves to the Jamestown colonists. Mm -hmm. The colonists brought 20 slaves to put them to work in the tobacco fields. Although these African, although these Africans were the first. Why one here italicize them? them because they were considered as like used slaves. to be animals man, yeah. like, like like any other cows or horses yeah. so right now this history emphasizes it so that they can be considered a human beings am right so mm -hmm. yeah go ahead <clears throat> although these africans were the first north american slaves slavery itself was some was nothing new mm -hmm. For at least a hundred years, European traders have brought slaves to the plantations of the Central and South America. Mm -hmm. They would load their ships with metal knives, pots and pans, cloth and rum, and would sail down to the west coast of Africa. There, they would dock their ships and meet with African le war, war leaders mm -hmm. who had taken members of their African mm -hmm. tribes as prisoners of war. The war leaders would trade these prisoners for European goods. Then, the European ships would sail across the Atlantic to the West Indies, the islands of Central Af America, trade the slaves for sugar, molasses, and cotton, and sail back to Europe. This became known as the triangular trade because, of the, ships followed, because the ships followed a triangular pattern. But now, slaves came not just to the Portuguese and Spanish colonies in, in Central and South America, but to the North America as well. Hold on, let me see. The triangle could, what's the first spot for the triangular trade? West uh, Africa? Okay. Yeah. What's the next one? Is uh, Central America idea? West yeah. Indians. Yeah. Um, We're in the section of tobacco yeah. and unwilling colonists. We're almost at the very end of this section. What page are you on? 74 on my book. Uh, 75 on mine. It might be different from yours. 75. I'm on 75. Yeah. Um, the place started with, um, it's the last, what is it? S the the third to the last paragraph. Count one, two from the You're end. Talking about the triangular trade right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see right here on your map. I think it does the. Oh, thing. yeah. There's a map here. So. You found it. Yeah, let's look at the map together. In the beginning of the chapter, there is a West Africa. Naduba, that's where it is. The West Indians, that's the second place. To catch a slave there. Amer uh, Africans there. Then trade to Central America, that is West Indians. They trade for sugar, molasses, cotton. Then they went to where? Mm -hmm. Europe, right? So. 
span the Portuguese start of the tree. This, uh, okay. So wait, where did they start? It start has the cats. I mean, cats slaves, and right from West mm -hmm. Africa. <coughs> At first, Virginia brought only a few hundred slaves per year, but the tobacco fields grew larger and larger. Mm -hmm. Other colonies south of Virginia began to plant not only tobacco, but also rice and cotton. These fields also needed thousands of laborers to tend to them, water them, and harvest them. More and more slaves came to North America, thousands and then tens of thousands per year. What? That's a lot of people. Years after the slaves came to Jamestown, almost half of the colonists in Virginia were slaves. Mm. The Virginia tobacco plantations prospered, but only because of the slavery. And this unwilling and these unwilling colonists could never earn their freedom or return home. Wow. That's tough. So tobacco business incurs the trade of a slavery, mm -hmm. especially started with the Virginia. Jamestown is a town. Port town in the see word north in Virginia, my state of Virginia. Now, Virginia from the founding fathers. Who is from Virginia? Remember any? Noah. Uh, George Washington. George Washington. Who else? The founding fathers. Uh, any anything further would just be a guess on my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. There, there you go. Good call. <laughs> yep. What about Madison? Mm -hmm. Madison. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people from Virginia. So. But that's few outstanding ones. So. Who's, uh, what is Madison? What is, his, what is his first name? I forgot. James, James Madison. Exactly. So, James Madison called the 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 father for the constitution so i'm gonna remember that one as well anyway so who wrote the the the, the declaration of independence who wrote that one uh thomas jefferson tom for jefferson okay who lead the war in wanley forge uh, george washington george washington good deal so now What about what are the other one? The other one is actually is the the <coughs> is Marshall, John Marshall. John Marshall was also from Virginia. Okay, good uh, history details. So let's read the next one. We're gonna start with the Kingland. So what is the name? Can you believe that? Queen. 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 Hey, anybody heard of this? I've read this. I remember reading about you this. You remember this? Okay. Of Angola. I never heard of this one. So go ahead. Do you want me to read? Yeah. I read it louder. Can you, can you tune up the voice there a little bit? I don't know this thing. Clean who? Ninja? You can prop. It's probably best because of our accent to ignore the N and just say Zynga. Zynga. Well, I'm not going to remember that, but okay. <laughs> the first slave brought to Jamestown came from the west coast of Africa in a Dutch ship, in a Dutch ship. But the Dutch weren't the first European nation in the trade in West Africa slaves. The Portuguese. 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 That's a good one. The Portuguese who lived in a small sea-going nation in the coast of the Spanish mm -hmm. peninsula had made fortune selling African slaves to other European countries. Portuguese slaves traders thought of the huge African continent as an inexhaustible, in inexhaustible, inexhaustible, 
inexhaustible means can never be exhausted. Mm. I can't pronounce that. It's okay. You got a symphony in the background. That's very really good. Doctor. Mm. It's okay. The Portuguese is in Invaders. Caspian Nova. <laughs> We're used to that. <laughs> the woman, oh, 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 sorry. The Princess Nisagana. Wait, Nisagana. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Zinga. <laughs> That's a good one. Zinga, they said. Zinga. Yeah, that's a good one. People on history need to have easier names because I cannot pronounce them. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna. The kingdom of the western coast of Africa. As long as she could remember, Portuguese traders have been landing on the source of her homeland, offering clothes, jewelry, and rum in the. You could change. Well, and, uh, exchange it for means prisoners. <laughs> means treating off. Oh, yeah. Ms. Zinga. Mm. I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong. It's okay. Ms. Zinga didn't know what happened to these prisoners. But she knew that once they board the slave ship, they were never to be seen. They were never seen again. Ms. Zinga's father. The ruler of Domba, wait, not Domba, was weary of weary of the Portuguese ships. They brought that. Fascinating means attractive or um, surprising. Good. Okay, we can start there. Move on with others, maybe the debate. Yeah. So let's Esther move on. So. <clears throat> the rumors were true. For many years, the Portuguese had been careful to make friends with the king, kings of African kingdoms near the coast. Dom no, Domba, mm -hmm. Congo to the north, and Matamba a little to the northeast. The Portuguese king wrote letters to the king of Congo, calling him most powerful and excellent king, and sent experts in farming to West Africa to serve the African people. In exchange for his friendliness, the Portuguese expected to receive as many prisoners of war as the kingdoms could provide. Not as Zinga grew to be a woman, but as Zinga grew to be a woman, the slave trade itself began to change. The colonies in North and South America demand, demanded more slaves than the African kingdoms could willingly provide. And other European nations, the English, Dutch, and French, were beginning to send slaves to West Africa. The Portuguese wanted to keep part of Africa for their very own an African kingdom of slaves which no English or Dutch trader could use. So the Portuguese king decided to attack and conquer the Nabamba. He sent an army to invade Zinga's homeland. After Domba was captured, the Portuguese planned to settle a hundred families there and re rename it the Kingdom of Sebastian. What? Kingdom what? Kingdom of, I don't know what to say. Oh. 
the best kill. But the conquest of Dumba, Dumba didn't go as planned. Zynga's father led his people against the Portuguese at the base of the coming battle after battle. By the time Zynga had grown to be a woman, woman Domba and okay. Portugal had been fighting for almost 30 years. Hi there, Kim, how are you? Good. Good. Sorry about that. No worries. My husband and I went through all of our VHSs. Oh, nice. Okay. We can go on. Sorry, okay. I just mm -hmm. to be Okay. Zynga joined in the fight. Yeah, right. He led a trained band of woman warriors against the Portuguese again and again. She gained a reputation for bravery and cruelty. Water. She's a fighter, huh? When Zynga was 34, her brother and her husband were banned. Bandy. 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 Zinga loved her two sisters, who fought beside her in warrior band, and her iron band. But she thought her brother was a weak, cowardly, cowardly whiner, who more more interested in food than in leadership. Vandy was afraid of his sister. He knew she was stronger than he was, and he suspected that she would be better, a better ruler. Mm. So when he took over the throne, he drove her out of the kingdom. Okay, let's see Laja continue then. <clears throat> but after a few years of war... But after a few years of war, mm -hmm. Mabandi realized that he would never be able to defeat the Portuguese. He decided that he would try to make a treaty with them instead. The Portuguese, tired of unending battles, were willing to meet for peace talks. But Mabandi was too frightened to travel to their headquarters. Instead, he sent a message to his sister, Zinga, to go meet the Portuguese. Go meet the. Go and meet the Portuguese for me, he said. Convince them to leave us in peace, and I'll allow you to return to, return to your homeland. Zinga agreed to go. She knew that the people of Nubanda, Nudoban, I don't know, it's but Dumba, Nudumba, not been able to outfight the Portuguese. Perhaps she could outwit them instead. So she dressed in her royal robes, collected a retinue of servants, and journeyed to the town where the Portuguese leaders had set up their headquarters. The Portuguese gave their comfortable and luxurious house to stay in and sent missionaries to Dr. Zinga listened carefully, and she realized that the Portuguese would treat her with more respect if she were a Christian. She allowed herself to be baptized and given a Christian name, Anna de Souza. What? Anna de so, 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 okay. <clears throat> she also ordered her sisters, Kifaji and Mukhamadu, to be baptized. The Portuguese gave them names Lady Grace and Lady Barbara. You got it, you got it, no problem. I hear you. Then they sent the day, then, and then the day to settle the terms of, treaty, of the treaty arrived. When Zinga walked into the hall where she would meet with the Portuguese leader, she looked around and only saw one chair. The Portuguese leader sat on a jeweled, car jeweled carved chair of state, but he had tossed a cushion on the floor for Zinga. Zinga turned to his servant behind her, raised her eyebrows, at, and raised her eyebrows at once. The woman came forward and fell down on her hands and knees. Zinga tossed her robe behind her and seated herself royally on her human throne. Now she could look the Portuguese in the eye. When the treaty talks was over, the Portuguese had agreed. Let's uh, let's know what finish the rest. <clears throat> <laughs> 
when the treaty talks were over, the Portuguese had agreed to treat Ndomba as an independent African kingdom, as long as all of the Portuguese captives taken in the long war were sent home. Nzinga rose and started from the room. Her servant remained on her hands and knees. The governor stood as well. Your throne, he pointed out. Nzinga threw him a royal glance. Great queens, she said, do not use the same throne twice. She stalked out and returned home to Ndoba. But the peace treaty and Zinga negotiated didn't last. The Portuguese, once again running low on slaves, invaded Ndomba again, kidnapping its people and packing them on board the slave ships. Nzinga begged her brother to fight back, but he refused. Perhaps he was afraid to lead warriors armed with spears against the guns of the Portuguese. Nzinga was furious with her brother's cowardice. Then, unexpectedly, Mbandi died. Many people whispered that Nzinga had poisoned him, afraid that he would lose the kingdom to that he would lose the kingdom to Portugal forever. No one knows for sure. But we do know that Nzinga declared herself queen and began a lifelong war against the Portuguese. The Portuguese captured her capital city and drove her from the palace. Nzinga simply invaded the nearby kingdom of Matamba and took its throne instead. Whenever the Portuguese tried to bring parties of slaves from other West African nations to the coast, Nzinga would send her soldiers to attack them. After years and years of struggling against Nzinga's fight fighters, the Portuguese finally gave up. They told Nzinga that she could return to her throne in Ndomba and rule it in peace, as long as she allowed them to pass through her kingdom with slaves on the way to the coast. Nzinga, now in her 70s, agreed. In great ceremony, she returned to the palace she had left years before. When she died at the age of 81, she was buried with a bow and arrow in her hands, ready for battle. But after Nzinga's death, the Portuguese took over Congo, Atamba, and Ndoba. Because Nzinga's people had called her Ngola, or war chief, the Portuguese thought that Ngola was the proper name of her country. So they called their new colony Angola, and Angola remained under Portuguese rule until November 11th, 1975, 300 years later. Wow. November 11th. Wow. That's a long time, huh? I think 1975. I was born in 71. So wow. that's still quite as early. We still have a colonies. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. I think, that. yeah. <laughs> I think the last few African colonies declared independence. So. Now, how long did that go? Let's calculate that as about uh, 55 years ago. Yeah, 55 years ago. That's in my lifetime. Can you believe that? That's terrible. 45, I think. <laughs> huh? 45 years ago? Yeah. yeah? Okay, 45 Sorry, years. You're right. Yeah. 45 years, yeah, years ago. Yeah, 45 years ago. Well, anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, uh, you guys did a good job in reading. Continue to improve on this part. But this part is about <coughs> the slave trading, am I right? So first they shared how the slave trading was bolstered by tobacco planting and trading. Then talking about the main players, talking the triangle trading road, and uh, then talking about zooming in one story on Portuguese, Portuguese Angola. What they did is, you know, with this queen going on. Anyway, so that's interesting history. So, what do you think, guy? What do you think about the queen? Any comments on the queen? Start with you. Interesting culture. It was huh? interesting, yeah, to have a, yeah. a um, like a woman fighting and stuff. War, huh? Yeah. Fighting wars. Yeah. yeah. What about you think about the she sitting down with the slave and uh, also slave a servant under her? Um, yeah, that was interesting. Then she said, "I never see another one again." So she leave the slave behind, basically, right? Yeah. Become a slave in a sense, huh? That's terrible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's real history, however. So, well, 
we're going to wrap it up. Kila, can you, can you pray for us? We'll wrap it up. Bring our best to your family, okay? So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my dog barks. Oh, we like it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let him bark more. That dog is very expressive. <laughs> I like it. Yes. How old is he? How old is he? he is let me guess. Let me guess. Let us guess. Ah, oh, no. I'm going to the party. <laughs> okay. Good to see you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week, I guess. Oh, actually on Wednesday, huh? Yeah. Okay. Bye, Kayla. Bye-bye. Yeah. Can somebody stop them for me? Thank you. Yeah.